Ain't nobody came out and condemned him, and they done been to his parties. Mm. Ain't nobody, what nobody concerned about Usher. Usher ain't got nothing about the compassion that Cassie got. And Usher was a kid. Mm. Where Usher supported everybody? Why everybody just focus on Cassie? And he say him and Usher was in the bed together. You already know what it is. What? It's your boy Laid Back with another reaction, another review, another episode. Hey, TikTok, you up to bat. Bob. It's your boy Laid Back. Welcome back to my channel. Hey, two things we got to do. You got to hit that subscribe button. I'm drinking this water. You already know what it is, man. Elevate more in 2024. Elevate more in 2024. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you hit the notification bell. Stay up to date with all the videos. Make sure you hit the like button, man. But we back with another TikTok joint, man. We got some more conspiracy theories going around. Diddy. More videos. And it's a lot of other stuff in this as well. So buckle down. Buckle up. Because it's going to get interesting. Also, you make it to the end of this one. You a real one for real, man. I also have a TikTok playlist if you want to go through and binge watch. You got some time on your hands. You got, you want to be creeped out. You want to be freaked out. You want to mind blown. Go ahead and check it out, man. I got a TikTok playlist for you as well. But let's go ahead and get into it. Fire Squad, what's popping? Let's get it. You actually met him when he was with Cassie. Yeah. So could you explain to me how this like came to be and what made you stay even though he was with Cassie? What was he telling you? When I first met Puff, I did not find him a I didn't like him like that. Okay. Eventually like he grew on me. And you knew about Cassie. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, did Cassie know about you? Is the question. She did or uh, she knew about me like four months into the relationship. Okay, and how did you find out about that, Cassie, knowing about you? Because she um, reached out to me. Damn. Oh, she did? Mm hmm What did she say? Basically, she just said to just leave him alone. Whoa. Okay. But then, but she reached out to me, like, a few times after that, and and she's always, she was never, like, nasty to me. She didn't call me names or nothing. She was always nice. I don't know if it was fake or not, but she was always nice. Okay. What was your response? To um, she she told me, like the last time I spoke to her, um, which was like a couple years ago, she told me, she was like, she called me at like four in the morning, hmm? and was like, hey, I just had a dream, and I just wanted to call you and um, tell you that I don't have, I don't hate you, I don't have bad 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 blood towards you or anything like that. She told Cassie. He, she, Do you believe everything she's saying about these freako sessions? Listen, that girl went through some tumultual sh that she never thought that she would ever have to go through being in the music business. Mm. Do you understand that? Music business. I've I've been next to people who are top in the game, in the music business. And they had said to me, yo, I had to suck a lot of to get to this position. Hell nah. You understand? Hell nah. They have said that. So I can imagine what that little girl went through with old boy. She ain't lying that thing. Because if she would have lied, he would have fought her tooth and nail. Mm. He would have fought her tooth and nail, bro. Don't get it messed up, or uh. He would have fought her tooth and nail. That little girl ain't lied nothing that she ain't lied about none of that. That's real. I don't know. Light, and hopefully, you can finally get some closure about what really happened to Diddy's adopted white daughter, Ava Baroni Combs. Back in 2020, Diddy went live on Instagram to announce that he had adopted a white girl named Ava, and he. In that last video, a lot of y'all was like, "What happened to this girl?" So let's see what happened. 
made her talk about do your own research too <laughs> herself and announced that she had been adopted by him my name's ava i'm a scorpio no 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 what's your last name uh, ava combs. what's your other oh, last name ava Barone. ava Barone combs yes it's, it's breaking news diddy adopted a white child <laughs> i want you i want you to tell them the story about how i adopted you but you still have beautiful parents that mature my child also but please please tell the story so <laughs> on the streets on the streets and then papa Combs decided that he would like to be a caring man so then he saw me and decided to pick me up and said to come inside and play with his kids yeah. <laughs> I adopted you like Madonna adopted kids and everybody else adopted kids, Charlize Theron, everybody's ever adopted Sandra Bullock. I adopted you because I felt that you could, you know, um, enjoy also having a black parent to take care of you and help you out. So, um, um, just clarify it, because it's, it's crazy out here online. So, so we, we played with the kids, and I got permission from your mother. To say all of that, just make it it's crazy out here. Uh, I met Jesse and Milo when I was six months old. Six months. Yeah. And six then, months. basically, uh, sister, all <laughs> four six of us. So. Six months is great. I always come over. Yes. Yeah. And it's Ava Brioni Combs. Come on. Let's go. Now at the time, we thought that Diddy was great to do this, right? Because there was a pandemic and children needed all the love they could get. But now people can't stop giving him the side eye for many reasons. And now the video comes across as just being very weird. And people had a lot to say when she said, my name is Ava, I'm a Scorpio. That sounds like the beginning of a dating profile. This is beyond weird. And she looked mad uncomfortable. It was very weird indeed. It was giving ASL and to catch a predator vibes. But that's not the only big red flag here because he compared this adoption process to that of Madonna, mm -hmm. which is an interesting comparison because people have pointed out how there are some shady parts of Madonna's adoption as well. According to reports, Madonna didn't exactly adopt her black kids the legal way. Last year, it was revealed that she was being accused of human trafficking and oh, sexually man. exploiting children by a charity organization called the Ethiopian World Federation. Wow. And some people claimed that she tricked the parents into letting her have the kids by promising to give the children a great education in the U.S. Wow and then return their kids, only for her to turn around and adopt them, allegedly. So what's interesting is that this is what Diddy is basing his adoption on, which says a lot. Even more, fans are wondering why Diddy had mostly his sons in that video, and not showing a lot of his daughters. I mean, Ava said that she wanted to play with Diddy's daughters, so why weren't they there? Just his sons? And don't even get me started on how uncomfortable Ava looked in the video. People are now wondering if she was uncomfortable because of the vibe in the room. Mm. Apart from Diddy, his sons have faced some concerning charges as well. Justin was named in Little Rod's lawsuit and Christian has a whole lawsuit of his own. And this has people guessing. But the biggest red flag here is how she seemed to disappear after that one video. I mean, right. sure, she was spotted out with Diddy's twins, Jesse and Delilah, a couple of times, but that was really it. She wasn't in any family photos or videos or anything like that. It's like she just disappeared. And considering that Diddy was insisting that she call him Papa Combs, you'd think that he would keep her around longer than five seconds. But considering the recent occurrence, the S trafficking allegations, and the allegations of Diddy treating women badly, well, fans are starting to wonder if Diddy might have allegedly done something to Ava. And that's why she's been so silent. Well, this is where we saw Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal, step in, like top flight security. And not only did he expose Diddy for allegedly treating Ava horribly, but he claimed oh. that Diddy allegedly used her for clout 
and then dumped her when he was done. What? According to Gene, Diddy's plan was for him to score chief points by adopting a homeless girl that he found on the streets during the pandemic and then loving her like this, except he didn't actually quite love her like she was his own because it was all for the cameras. Gene also talked about the allegations of Diddy doing something wrong to Ava, and while he didn't exactly come out and spell it out, he hinted at it very, very strongly, saying that everybody in the industry knows that Diddy is that way. I, I, and you know what's you know what's so crazy is, bruh, that all these stories has been around the industry. So I guess I never realized how close Ashton Kutcher is with P. Diddy. I had no idea that they had been friends for years and Ashton Kutcher used to attend Diddy's white parties. Uh -oh. Like Diddy and Ashton have been close even back when he was married to Demi Moore. And I know that I've talked about why I don't like Demi Moore. The main reason being because of this clip from when Demi was, I think she was 19 or 20 and she like made out with a teenage boy. I think he was what? 15 years old. I just always thought it was gross and weird and I was never really a fan of her never have really kept up with her since I found out about this clip that I'm not going to play for you because it's gross. But anyway, I am okay. officially headed down the rabbit hole to learn more about the origins of this friendship. And I find it very interesting because Ashton Kutcher was recently exposed for writing a letter to the judge asking for leniency in Danny Masterson's R word sentencing while simultaneously being a founder and running a organization to protect people, especially children from becoming victims. For someone who claims to care so much about victims, this guy really seems to have a lot of friends who are horrible, horrible people. I'm gonna dig into this. I'll let you know what I find. Ashton. Now they say they got a lot of videos of people, allegedly. Let's go. So to the people who didn't believe Cassie before, how are you feeling right now? Because I always believed her. I believed her when she put out the lawsuit. I believed her when I read those court documents. And I even sh for sure believed her when he settled for $30 million just 24 hours after the lawsuit became public. Yeah. What feels like a movie after watching that video was her reality. Her having to run from a monster and getting this close to freedom mm. after waiting for him to what she thought fall asleep just for him to wake up run after her in a towel and do what he did to her yeah the worst possible thing and that's just a fraction of what was her reality i think everyone who didn't believe her owes her an apology because you are disgusting and her death needs to be looked into because if this is what cassie dealt with what do you think kim porter dealt with And people shaving their head. Did you kind of think like, well, what's going on? Why does everyone want to be me? I, I never thought that anybody wanted to be me, but I was <laughs> definitely shocked because in the first three months of having the cut, everybody thought I had lost my mind. And <laughs> I remember seeing an interview and you were like, I went to sit for ages. And the guy was like, but you shaved your yeah, head. Yeah, I shaved like, what are you doing? No, um, and then it just became, it became part of me. So even now, I shaved more. Yeah. Last year, I shaved the other side. I just become who I am, and it was very flattering that um, other people wanted to do it as well, especially other artists. I remember getting a, an email from Lala. Oh yeah, yeah. And she was like, and she sent a photo, and I was like, oh my god, I can't believe you did that. Your boyfriend's sitting next to you, yeah. and you and Terrence are. Yeah. You know, what does that feel like? It's work. It feels. I mean, obviously, there's a little bit of anxiety with that, but Terrence is a good friend of mine, and you know, Puff has been so understanding with everything, so it's good. But do you believe in love at first sight? I do. I do. Was it love at first sight with your boyfriend? It was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. What makes you guys work? Um, well, I think what makes any relationship work, if it is working, is, you know, just not talking about it too much and just keeping it close to your heart. She say that a lot, keeping it close. I told you this before. When he cursed his mother, I said to him, man, if you curse your mother again, I'm going to beat the shit out you. Oh. He said, well, no, Gene, she always... 
She always in my business. I said, if it wasn't for her, you wouldn't have no business. I'm saying that to say this to the women out there. If a man disrespect his mother, you just like an ice cube. You ain't got a chance in hell. Do you understand? That man disrespected his mother. What do we care about these chicks out here, these women out here like that? Now, I ain't gonna say that he could, couldn't change. Maybe he have. He's, he's, he's brother, a doctor, or something love now. But back then, way before Kim, beat the shit out of Misa because she thought Dang. she was dealing with Eric Sermon, the green eyed dude. He's known for shit like that, bro. But it's a pattern. And they caught up with him. Ah! Diddy's beyond a pimp. He's downright merciless. With everything that's going on, man, you looking at, um, they dropping them left and right. Um, companies are parting ways with them. Yeah. Um, all of that's happening right now because he's tarnishing his own image. What I think is just a, it's on what I call is a character assassination that's going on right now. So it's a, it's a, just another form to silence a man, make to humble a person. You know how sometimes you got to humble somebody? You're right, right. Yeah, I think he's being, he, they making a day, he's being humbled right now, which it took a long time. It takes a long time to humble an arrogant person. So Diddy, he's an arrogant guy. Very arrogant, selfish. All of those kind of things that you don't like, you don't, you don't never see in a, in, in a true friend or a grown man. You know what I mean? Like you're a grown man, you carry yourself like a grown man. He he just mm. he doesn't carry yourself like a friend. You know. So you're not surprised when you hear Cassie say that you know Diddy he used to hit her and she had to cover up her bruises with makeup. You're not surprised when you hear that. Cause I interviewed Gene Deal and he wasn't around Bad Boy when Cassie was around, but he told me that you know he did the same thing to Kim Porter. Dang. Or you could take it before then, and then you can remember when and when Misa was dating what Eric Sermon from EPMD, and that was her childhood boyfriend. Like coming up, they was the you know lovey dovey couple, and um, it was back then he used to you know do that with Misa. So, you know, and one thing I always say is, as a man, and as anyone in a relationship, we often go through these kind of things. So I've seen it what? in friends. I've seen it in him. I've seen fights. I've seen all kinds. I've seen fights between when he have an argument, fight with a female, whatever it may be. I've seen it with my own friends. But sometimes you say, you know, we all go through things, but once you have a sign of doing it over and over and over again, that's when it becomes a problem. You'd be like, so every relation. Nah, man, look, man, you can't be out here fighting women though. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care how old you are is not cool, not one time, not two time, not pattern, nothing. Come on, getting into a disagreement is a disagreement, but a full out fight, come on, man, that ain't cool, man. Relationship that you get in, you, you're violent in them. So you say, you know, I don't have to wait to see what he would, you know, I was around when, 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 when Cassie was there, I knew Kim Porter before uh, I knew Puff. Um, I met Misa, but you know, it was a history. When you have a history of the same thing, man, it, it becomes a problem. Something you, you you do once or twice, you get over, you don't, first you're not supposed to put your hands on a woman's way I was Thank raised. You. Thank you. I'm glad he said that. Life really got real serious when you get married. I put up a picture of Wolf and one of Puffy's sons, Justin Cohen. Look at him. You tell me. Puff beat up till she got up under the beat her literally till she tried to run up on the car. Wow. The downfall of Diddy is getting crazier by the day. And now his son, Justin Combs, is allegedly turning on him after viral reports emerge that Justin's biological dad is Diddy's late bodyguard, Wolf. Meanwhile, Diddy's other bodyguard, Gene Deal, revealed that Diddy used to beat up Justin's mom, Misa Hilton, because he thought she was cheating on him. Several other sources who used to run in the same circle also dropped hints that Justin isn't Diddy's biological child. <laughs> and fans are now speculating it's only a matter of time until all of Diddy's kids turn on him. But what wow. did Justin say about these rumors? And will Justin's mom, Misa, join the growing number of lawsuits against Diddy? Let's get into it. Is she really 42? I don't, I don't know, but... I, I don't think Misa's 42. Misa's a little older than 42. When I did my math, it looked like she was probably like 15 when they did it. Look, at, look how old Justin is. 
So rumors mm. are going around that Justin Combs, Diddy's eldest son, might not be biologically related to him and instead could be the child of Anthony Wolf Jones, Diddy's late bodyguard. Damn. These rumors are not exactly new. However, they resurfaced again after a third woman recently filed a lawsuit against Diddy, alleging SA. To give you some context, Diddy met Justin's mom, Misa Hilton, when she was still in high school. And according to Jean Deal, she was either 15 or 16. I've always wondered a couple things. Was Diddy messing with Misa when she was in high school? Yeah. Okay, so I, my math is about right. 15, right. 16, they start messing right. around. Okay, and Diddy's definitely older than her. Right. So y'all can do the math on that. Misa was interested in fashion from a young age, and when she was 17, Diddy got her a job assisting on a Jodeci music video. Diddy and Misa dated on and off for a few years, and according to Jean, Diddy was controlling and physically abusive. Diddy was apparently cheating on Misa throughout their relationship. However, Jean said the moment Diddy started suspecting she was talking to someone else, he beat her up so badly that she had to hide under a car. What? Misa was drop dead gorgeous. She, she thought Puff was messing around. I guess like she started talking to the dude from Under EPMD. He came to see her. And Puff beat up till she got up under the car. Beat up literally till she tried to run up under the car. Wow. Wow. Now, Misa gave birth to Justin in 1993. And while Gene said he can't know for sure if Justin is Diddy's biological child, he did acknowledge that Justin looks like Diddy's best friend. Damn. Do you think that Diddy is actually Justin's father? Ooh, we. That is crazy. Um, two, 24 hours before the raid, Kim Kardashian decides to unfollow Diddy, right? Well, come to find out, this person by the name of Lou Taylor is apparently Diddy's manager. So, um, Lou Taylor apparently is paying off allegedly some of Diddy's victims from this slush fund through some church fund, okay? Mm. Not only that, um, Kim Kardashian mama has been making these girls pay 10% ties to some church that Lou Taylor and her husband is basically owner, call owner, whatever. Uh... Can you believe Kim Kardashian is being exposed for allegedly being Diddy's accomplice and paying off his partners? Chili, Whoa. just when we thought 2024 couldn't get any crazier, the universe pulls a fast one on us and drops another bombshell, Whoa. making us question everything we thought we knew about our favorite celebs. Fans have been suspicious of Kim's involvement in Diddy's affairs for a while now, and it seems like we finally have some evidence to back it up. New information suggests that not only was Kim aware of Diddy's questionable activities, but she also allegedly aided him in covering up the evidence and compensating his victims in exchange for a cut of the profits. Girl, you better buckle up for this roller coaster of drama and hold on to your edges because this situation is absolutely bonkers. Uh, did Kim really conspire with Diddy to have Kanye West committed to a mental institution so they could swindle him out of his money? What? Chilly, it looks like it's game over for Kim because Diddy is snitching and he is snitching hard. So let's break down this messy tea. And as look, they tried to medicate me. They, I was exhausted. They wrongly diagnosed me. And they, 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 when I asked them how much lithium did you want to put me on exactly it took them four days to answer because they were embarrassed about the amount right and i refused to take this right you understand that if i had taken the medication i would not be here and it would have been oh, woe is he was deeply troubled we miss him we love his music though well they would have britney spears too I mean, look at they they, Michael Jackson. Or, or worse, yeah. But so <laughs> look, at what, look, at what they did, look at what they did to Britney. When she went in, she was tired, she was exhausted, yeah. she was in a bad way. But 10 years of that medication wrecked her brain. So it looks like Diddy is trying to pull down as many people as he possibly can because tell me why this man has been snitching on everybody and they mama. Y'all know how there have been multiple reports about how footage from his parties and freak offs has been leaking for the past couple of days. Well, word on the streets is that he is allegedly behind the leaks. And now he just leaked footage of Kim Kardashian. And it is very, very bad. Hey folks, what? remember when Cat Williams dropped that bomb about Diddy not being the only celeb in hot water? Well, it seems like he wasn't kidding, because a bunch of them are getting dragged down with him. And guess who's caught up in the whirlwind? None other than Kim Kardashian. But hold on to your hats, because the accusations against her are wild. Word on the street is she might have been helping Diddy smooth over some rough patches by allegedly paying off his accusers and, uh, special friends. Looks like Kim's got more than just contouring on her plate these days. Rumor has it her bank balance isn't looking so hot and it's becoming harder to brush off. You know how Kim and her crew 
are all about flaunting their wealth online with their luxury cars and dreamy homes? Well, seems like there might be some cracks in that shiny facade because Kim's reportedly drowning in debt. Let's talk cash, honey. What? Kim's always had a bit of a shady reputation when it comes to money matters. She's not one to shy away from controversial gigs if they pay well. There's talk that she's not afraid to bend the rules a bit. Whispers about her involvement in some dodgy dealings. Co Kim and P. Diddy, boy. Chow. Just when we thought we were wrapping up with this whole mess with Diddy, he just started trending again after he was exposed for sleeping with Saucy Santana while he and Young Miami were together. Apparently, Santana was one of the paid words that Diddy was sleeping with at them freak-off parties. People believe this is where Saucy... Oh, hell no! Bro, what the hell world are we living in? Santana is getting all the money to fund this extravagant lifestyle because his music career isn't nearly successful enough to fund his extravagant lifestyle. Diddy had his eye on Saucy Santana right from the day that Miami brought him around and he didn't stop till he had Santana in his bed. There's even some what? speculations that he would get freaky with Saucy Santana with Miami in the room. What's even crazier about this is an old song that Saucy Santana put out recently resurfaced where he blatantly confessed to these allegations. Child, Diddy never ceases to surprise us, does he? Okay, so as most of y'all already know by now, it's really not a secret that Diddy's on the DL. He's been exposed over these last few months for hitting on boys and flying them out to different countries to clap them cheeks. A Hell lot of us no. came to know about this when 50 Cent put Diddy on blast for trying to make him one of his boy toys by offering to take him on an all expense paid shopping Hell spree. No. Puff was like, yeah, like first he was amping him to, to right. get stout. Then he was like, yo, he's like, yo, so yo, when we gonna get the chance to, you know, to kick it, like we could just hang out, nigga. We gotta, we gotta Hold kick that. it. This is Puff. Okay. He's telling me we gotta kick it, and he was like, right. yo, why don't we like go shopping or some? Shit? I mean, like I pay for it. And I was like, what this shit just say. <laughs> I remember that. He was like, what? I'm not going shopping with you, nigga. You know. Yeah. To the core, like, give him who you are. Do you um? I guess long term, as you and uh, you know Puff have this amazing relationship that's withstood all the rumors and all mm -hmm. the negative energy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everybody always wants to put their own uh, terms of a relationship on other people. Mm -hmm. When is he gonna marry you? Yes. When is this gonna happen? When? It, and you know, nowadays yeah. with somebody like Puff, who's I get, you know, Puff's been married. I don't know how many times. Once, maybe twice. Zero. I don't know. Z oh, he's never been married. No. So obviously, he's not into that. <laughs> that's that's not. His I, you thing. know what's what's cool about Puff is that he is, and he does want to understand marriage. But we have, you know, a certain type of relationship, and it just works the way it is. Do you um? Do you believe marriage is for everybody? No, absolutely not. My parents are still married. Rod, how long have they been married? 35 years. Yeah. Is that your brother? That's my older brother, yeah. Hey, brother. That's, That's right. <laughs> By the way, you guys look alike. Yeah. He's like but do you, do you believe in marriage? I believe in marriage if it's with the right situation. But right. I feel like, you know, I've seen a lot of people get married and break up in the term right after I, yeah no, in in the term that i've been in my relationship right so, yeah, yeah yeah you know what i mean I don't, I don't feel like you can't really put a tag on it of course everybody looks at marriage as something very i don't know solid and important but if you have a solid relationship you got i mean you got it's gotta i'm not i've never been married and i think it's me neither i think it's good for um and I love, I love the idea of marriage, but mm -hmm. I think people put the it's wrong... the idea of marriage that I think people fall in love with. Right. I sometimes. Think, right, but I but don't think they people... want to... Now, look, you, you stand for Diddy. Um, you were very vocal about... Why this nigga sitting like this, man? <laughs> Why is he sitting like this? It was all over the internet when you spoke out. Um, but then you have people like LeBron James who unfollowed him. Uh, Steph Curry. Uh, Meek Mill. They finally broke up. Um, it seemed they like just Hollywood secretly broke up. Yeah, <laughs> homie, listen, listen to me. They all knew before now. Ooh. This just for the this just for the cameras, but they all knew before now. You haven't heard nobody come out and condemn him, really. Mm. Mm. They've been knowing for now, homie. Everybody know he made a shave with her off. He made her get some fake breasts, take them out, and everybody know this. Why they acting like they didn't know? 
Come on, LeBron. LeBron, LeBron. knew that. <laughs> LeBron. <laughs> Man, Meeky knew that. Meeky? Meeky was part of the allegations, the girl say. <laughs> Stevie J come out defending him. Meek defending him. Ain't nobody came out and condemned him, and they done been to his parties. Mm. Ain't nobody, what nobody concerned about Usher. Usher ain't got nothing about the compassion that Cassie got. And Usher was a kid. Mm. Where Usher supported everybody? Why everybody just focus on Cassie? And he say him and Usher was in the bed together. Usher even came out and said, man, I wasn't supposed to be seeing that type of stuff. I was just a kid. Why ain't nobody riding, speaking up for Usher? Ooh. Because they picking and choosing, my nigga. And I just want to remind everybody, he... Cassie ain't no black girl. She a mixed breed mulatto Italian chick. He get to mistreat her if he want to. She ain't black. Okay, no, but, just, but look, I just said this say to make some people mad. That's all. Yes, I, I don't really mean that. <laughs> you know it's crazy. It. Look, um, yeah, look. <laughs> What's that? Who's? He tried to DM me. <laughs> Who did he? <laughs> oh, he wanted to get it. That's why I told you quit biting your. Quit biting your lips like that. <laughs> say he's this. He done been in this boy's in box. Ooh. He oh, you shit. saw how he was pressing up on Justin Bieber. <laughs> no, you just no. see he put that pressure on Justin Bieber. Man, I think that Justin Bieber nervous. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. He was talking to Justin Bieber like, why you didn't call me back after like a one night stand? Like, he was like, damn, this shit wasn't good? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He he, I, he was trying to get you, nephew. No, no. Nephew. You lying to me. That's why I said, listen, that's why you quit saying, hey, uh, they gonna tell you. I'm telling you, <laughs> boy. <you, you, laughs> no, 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 no. You and Diddy would, would have a good time. Y'all can have a little party party. Who, uh, ain't him? Nah, we ain't gonna send nephew over there with him. Facts. Cause, cause uh, he might can get it out of nephew. Hey. He might can get I think I think the way Diddy pressed them boys and put pressure, if he put that same pressure he put on Justin Bieber, I think nephew might give in. No, no. I got a No, I was out of no, I, was out out of I agree. I agree. He said I agree. Oh my god. Literally, there's a woman that said, man, she walked in and they made, well, well, you'll say that. He said, I mean, kids look up to him, man. I mean, you know. I don't know no kid look up to Diddy. That's real. I don't know. No, I know grown people who look up to him. Most of our kids wasn't born to look up to him. When they look at, uh, you know, he, he just had a, you know, congratulations to the new child. And they look at Carisha, they love City Girls, but they look at what he has and like, like you said, I see him. Grown folks do. Okay, okay, we'll now, take that. Now, kids yeah. look up the NBA young boy in dirt. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not looking at Diddy. Oh. Uh, me and Diddy fucking his son's girlfriend. Come on, homie. That nigga fucking his son's girlfriend. Oh. Uh, he a sick motherfucker, homie. Now, some of it may be true, but you stayed in that paint too long. Five second violation. You ever heard of buyer's remorse? Like, oh, uh, well, it, it's not buyer's remorse. See what happened is when you got a billion dollars and you whooping your bitch and you doing all this type of shit, she enjoying the perks. Once y'all stay together for so long, you stop perking her. You stop letting her have the perks that she once had to keep taking e beatings and, and keep doing this because you done found something new you like probably, right? You don't put her in a position where she can go off and enjoy her perks without you. You bound her. And that's what he did. So now she ain't getting to enjoy her perks no more. But you out enjoying your perks. Now she won't out. There are three women I know right now in my life. They've been in my life for six years. I got them off of Epstein Island. What? I cannot say where they are in the world. What I can say is when they got into the boat, they were roughed. Want to know how they ended up on Epstein Island? They auditioned to be models for music videos. Ooh, when they got to Miami, they had to show and turn over their ID and they collected their passports. And then what? the next thing you know, they were in a storage container. Can 
by a bunch of weird strangers on camera who were what? bidding for all of the terrible things that were happening to them live online. After they made it through that, that's when they were sent to Rick Ross's music videos um, as groupies and extras to make sure that they could walk around in society without looking like victims. What? Yeah, do you believe like Cassie uh, her was that good to where Diddy was hanging niggas over the balcony by they Timberland boots? Diddy like booty. You know, like where you hanging niggas ass out over the gun. Yeah, then like them boys. We them boys. I didn't like them boys. <laughs> she. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. He's what he crazy. was doing to me and ain't got nothing to do with her. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was just an angry homosexual <laughs> that was violent toward men and women. <laughs> Dang. He a savage boy. People are saying the whole Wendy Williams documentary that she's pretty much allegedly playing this way to keep herself safe from any unaliving. It's been working for a lamb dual brown. Uh, to play crazy. Why, why, why wouldn't it work? Hey, no. And then I gave her some. I do what I do. I do. Yeah, yeah. The oosh goss, woosh wash, and shit. Orlando's brilliant. Right. Yeah. Y'all spent time with him. We did. He's highly intelligent. Yes. Imagine what it's been like to wear this character for this long. Mm. That shit that he does is a character. Actually, the shit that he does online is the best acting he does. Ooh. Is he speaking truth? Of course he is. <laughs> Since he was a kid. Oh, man. Do you hear about stories of Diddy like shooting people? Yeah. Blowing up cars? Yeah. Is he this gangster that behind the scenes that ever, is that him? Or is that Shout people Shout out to Wendy Williams. The first woman to uncover the homo thugs. Mm. Diddy be going crazy. So you don't think you don't think Diddy sitting somewhere nervous? You don't think he, you know? Nah. You don't think he's losing no sleep behind this? Nah. Because all this information is not new to law enforcement. Mm. Now maybe Keefe D says something that lets them know he got some evidence at that house. But nigga, even Keefe D said, I wasn't the one that killed Tupac. Orlando was. And Orlando's not here no more, so. What witness can you, what witness do you have to place him at the scene and say, yeah, I saw him do this. Suge Knight is saying, man, he ain't the shooter. Suge yeah. Knight is a victim of the crime. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So with all the, the Diddy allegations going on, man, how you feel about you know, everybody speaking out against Diddy, saying Diddy. They lying. Ain't nobody telling the truth uh, uh, but that whole uh, uh, Cassie. Cassie. So yeah, you yeah. do think Diddy, you know, had a lot of sexual relations with men and shit? Yeah, I think he did. Even with Stevie J? Because they said some shit about a video or something. Are you aware of that? I mean, you know. The I, but but the punk, but 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 from what I saw, the punk came out and said, no, nah, not that Stevie J. Oh, it was another Stevie J. Yeah, that's what the punk said. So, so, uh, I don't think straight men can call niggas gay. It got to be the punks. Because how straight niggas know who gay? Yeah. How straight niggas know who gay? If the punks ain't blowing the whistle. So if you got invited to a Diddy party, would you would you be willing to go? They not even talking. Like, they, the words that synced up with this video ain't even synced up. Uh, <laughs> no, hell no. He ain't going to feds yet because he just got stabbed in jail. Yes, he did. He's been beaten three times. I'm going to say it for a fact. I know you the one pulling the strings. Reggie Wright Jr. Stop putting your dirty work on other people. You know exactly what. 
you are. And so help me, God, if you don't keep my man, my your mouth. Mm. Mm. Now, what that mean? Who the hell is Reggie White, senior, junior? Yeah, yeah, he, he should be forgiven. Uh, you got to think, homie, that was 10, some, 10, 15 years ago. That was eight years ago. Eight years ago. So y'all mad at something I did eight years ago? And, and this what we do? This is part of my relationship. This, every woman I'm with, I do this with, so why y'all mm. mad? Mm. She never not once called the police. Mm. All she ever wanted when she left this relationship was some money. And I kept saying, no, nah, I ain't giving you no money. Mm -hmm. She finally got with a white dude that can go get a lawyer to go get us to harden them some new money now. All she wanted was some money. Mm -hmm. She never wanted him to go to jail. Not once wow. have she said he should be in jail for the rest of his life. Not once have she came out and made that statement. Her only pursuit was, I want to be compensated. See, I know women, when they trying to get away, they run down the hallway butt naked, barefooted, no bags. They're not trying to carry no bags. They don't care about the Louis Vuitton purse. They don't care about the watches inside the bag. None of that. But you also got to remember, if y'all believe karma is real, because y'all say karma is real, when he used to cheat on Kim Porter with her, she used to be present. According yep. to documentation, when he used to whoop Kim Porter, Ooh. she used to be antagonistic. Ooh. Like, mm -hmm. you know how they do. She was down with him when he was whooping Kim. Mm. So what make her think them whoopings don't come to her when she saw this kind of behavior in this man? But mm. what happens is the, the rewards outweigh the abuse. Mm. The rewards outweighed the abuse. That's why when she got the money, she kept silent. She ain't said nothing. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. He was waiting for Kim. Remember? He was waiting. The casket was ready. She was what? literally casket ready. Pump got one of the hottest DJs off of Hot 97. And she said, you can see this part, she said, no, you know, Ben, you know I love you. And Puffy, I love you too. I adore that we're the last two people on earth who refer to him as Puffy. Really? Remember, I am hip hop. Yeah, exactly. It's funny how when men get older in hip hop, they're still, you know, well respected, well versed, cool herc, you know what I'm saying, and um, and red alert, and you know the legends, KRS One, you know, you put me in there, and all of a sudden it's like, oh no, Wendy's a talk show lady. Uh, no, I listened to Big L on the way to work this morning. <laughs> when you know when we were younger, you know, you were hearing your left ear, and that was considered straight, and hearing your right ear, that'd be gay, and then at one point. People start wearing both earrings, yeah. and you know what I mean? And, and then they started wearing girl pants, and then they're wearing jeggings, and then, yes, it's very effeminized, but be very clear. There were lots of homosexuals in hip hop back in the 80s, too. Um, and, uh, you know, that was, that was, um, you know, what's worse, you know, hip hop wearing skirts or hip hop being closeted and having a plethora of kids to prove manhood that, you know, and, and denial of something that shouldn't you shouldn't have to deny which is your sexuality so i hear what jamari faked her sickness though i'm working all the time and you ain't spending no time with me so this other man was spending so it's, it's me 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 but she not realizing the lights on the car got gas in it you protect it uh the kids sleep good at night uh uh you don't have to lock the doors do all this because you, you it's a man in the house or uh, it's comfort it's, it's security uh uh, there's direction. Uh, the, the the woman problem is uh, no one can correct her, and, and 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 a man has to be able to correct because his job is to establish law and order in the household. So most real men aren't liked. Mm. Mm. I'm gonna say it again. Most real men with real traits and characteristics aren't liked. He gonna say, "Baby, take that off. You're not gonna go outside with your titties showing like that. I mean, you got your ass out like that." Man, put some panties on, your pussy pretty showing. That's a, a real man. Establish law and order. Say, y'all sit down somewhere. Nigga, a real man ain't liked. He's missed and appreciated after he's gone. But while he's here, he ain't liked, nigga. He's tolerated. Mm -hmm. That's why they don't tell your daddy. They keep shit from daddy. That's why daddy get a tie. 
That's why daddy get kicked in the ass. Mama get everything. It's all about if mama happy. It ain't about if daddy happy. And daddy dying of stress. And mama living long being happy. Because Ooh. guess what? Everybody making mama happy. <clears throat> Don't give a damn about daddy being happy. Mm. Alleged wow. It's afraid to come out the closet. You know, they mad at you for calling Meg the Stallion there, right? He called herself the Stallion. I called her the Trojan horse. <laughs> she called herself a horse with a dick. Rocky, the franchise. What? The Italian Stallion. <laughs> a mare is a female horse. A mare. Megan the mare, that could work. <laughs> Why do you need to be Stallion? Oh. I was she listed as born a man six years ago on the internet. What? I don't know. I didn't put it there. Jesus. Why was Tory Lane so quickly turned off? A matter of fact, any nigga she f in this industry so quickly turned off by her. I don't know. Maybe they bump into some sh again. Oh, I don't know. What was the ex boyfriend? He did the whole diss record about her. Uh, party, party, partisan. Yeah, and he was like, oh, the real you, and I'm like, which you is that? Well, he said she got some lipo and the nose job. Yeah, he said she got surgery. <laughs> some turned Tory off and kept running back to Kelsey. I'm so done. I'm getting a drink of water. Whatever the case may be, he was cool enough to diss the both of you whack bitches for a Jenna. And everybody know they poison. Facts. Megan is a man or allegedly? Um. Problem I have with Drag Wire, right? Is well, yeah, she is a victim and she probably knows, knows more than anybody does in the industry because she's been in those rooms. Same thing with Orlando Brown. Like I think Orlando sometimes. Y'all let me know about Jaguar, right? I'm not too familiar with her. She said she was a victim, victim of what? Fill me in in the comments if you know anything about this woman plays into that role because you can see i don't know i just really pay attention to his body language and his facial facial like expressions and i don't think that he's like cuckoo for coco Puff. jaguar right however i don't appreciate her coming on like she literally said that meg is a trans woman like that is so harmful that's a harmful rhetoric for black women that literally is why black women be getting killed and trans women like she is spreading this harmful fucking rhetoric and she doesn't even know for sure like do we even know she ever met meg the stallion what i mean when i say you have to use discernment when you hear any of this information even when i give y'all information even when i say i read it from a book that should never stop your curiosity you should go and read that book then you should go find another book to read about that same subject and compare the information see if this information aligns like you never stop learning this is how y'all don't know yourself like this is the reason why a lot of people don't know who they are because the journey of Tao for me is the never-ending journey of the undiscovered self this is why i always say that alex jones is a cautionary tale because once you pick up on a pattern and you see like it aligned like i am picking up on things right now right but i still have more learning to do like you never stop learning i'm not saying that for jaguar but i'm saying that she's been traumatized and she's been hurt by this industry so i think that she's seeing patterns where there's nothing there like calling meg a trans woman that's kind of fucking crazy so that makes me question everything that she says and i'm not saying that she's lying it just makes me question everything she says. I don't take anything she says at face value and neither should you. One thing to point out though is she's never been sued. That's the only thing, but that doesn't mean that it won't happen. I don't know, she kind of lost me when she said that Meg was a trans woman and people were like, yeah, 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 but y'all just hate black women. Y'all did the same thing with Sierra. Like, mm -mm, we don't like that. Mm. It's funny, you open up uh, Beyonce's internet, it just gets weird. Um, Beyonce's internet? That's, that's what we're calling that it. That belongs to the <laughs> devil. <laughs> Calling that the devil. She ain't number the employee. Oh, oh. Half of which dumbass bitch. Oh, nobody want to accept that that bitch bitch. I think oh. she's she went and killed the girl cats. <sighs> a girl went to court mm. and charged her with extreme witchcraft. Wow. It, she was hypnotized. She was drugged. Beyonce came and she was in there. For Eating on her and shit while she was asleep. What? No snacking on his bitch. Killing people cats. Mm. They wouldn't give her the restraining or they just told her to stay away from Beyonce and work for somebody else. Guess what? She's having a hard time finding work too. Which is interesting because she's a brilliant musician and she was trained at the Berkeley, esteemed Berkeley College of Music. Handpicked by my very good friend, Terry Lynn Carrington. Dr. Terry Lynn Carrington, 
who put together Beyonce's entire female band, which was Matthew Knowles' idea because he couldn't get Beyonce to stop people. Hmm? Guess you didn't know your daughter well enough because she just started all the girls. Impulse control issues? I don't know. What is going on? Sometimes it's overwhelming. Why did God give me my talent, my gift, my family? But I know you're not supposed to question God. So I'm grateful for the life he's given me. I'm so grateful. So I'm alive and I'm... Women a dream. Was she all right? Why you wore that Trump hat in here? Oh, uh, because I'm, 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 I'm a die hard Trump supporter. Uh, in my household, uh, you got Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. you got Jesus, and you got Donald Trump. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Not in that particular order, but yeah, you got yeah, Martin Luther King, Jesus, and Donald Trump. Why you got Donald Trump? Now, you uh, know, well, I'm a straight Democrat, but I, I'm for the best person. Oh, uh, yes, but sir. But now, why you got Donald Trump? Uh, because I paid attention in school uh, when I was a kid, and so I know, <laughs> I know, the, I know the true history of, of both the Republican uh, and Democratic Party. Uh, I know that they really didn't switch during, during the Nixon Southern strategy, that one became more clever than the other in dealing mm. with black people. Uh, we the Democrats, we got away, we were the Republicans' friends. Mm. We were their friends, but we were the Democrats. Hmm. Uh, when you look at the... the, 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 the the origins of the Ku Klux Klan, uh, it originated out of the Demo Democratic Party. The Ku Klux Klan? It did. Okay. Uh, uh, every, every civil rights legislation that ever has been passed in this country uh, was authored, uh, uh, written, uh, sponsored, and voted on 100% by Republicans and not Democrats. Every civil rights legislation. Well, what, what, what you going to do? So let me, let me feel the magic about Trump. Right. So, as a, so as a kid, I remember being six, seven years old. Uh, and, and seeing Donald Trump re receiving a, a, an award with, 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 with Muhammad Ali, uh, Rosa Parks, mm. uh, from the NAACP. Uh, not only that, uh, he in, engaged and interacted in, in our culture from the 80s throughout the 90s and even the 2000s, from rappers to Michael Jackson. Uh, so when we looked out into our culture, his face appeared many, many times. Uh, so for me to grow up now and, and then hear the media because before the media started saying he was racist, I never heard a black leader say it. I never heard mm. my grandmother say it. I never heard no one even mention anything bad about him other than rappers giving him praise in over 300 to 600 rap songs. So for the media to say, oh, he's racist, I knew they were playing con on us. And I can remember when America was great. I can remember mm. when black children could play outside all day long uh, and you didn't hear about kids being kidnapped. You didn't hear about drive-by shooting. He be speaking some shit. The first time I ever saw Jay-Z or even heard him spit a rhyme was at an MC battle, street battle in New York. He showed up as the nigga that was with Big L. Yes. Big L was who put Jay-Z on. And then mm -hmm. Big L died and then the next thing you know, Jay-Z. Doing songs with Biggie and building a working camaraderie with Honeycombs. And honeycombs. then Biggie died, Tupac died. There was the... The, the fight between who was the top rapper now, Nas and, and Jay-Z, and then the next thing you know, Nas has a nervous breakdown and he's taken out of the game and then saw Jay-Z. Mm -hmm. He will slump anyone in any relationship well. for a dollar. Look at how he did Dane. If you're a halfway intelligent person, when do you start questioning how lucky some motherfuckers keep getting? Right. She's spicy. Everyone that passed is the list. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, Big L. The list. <laughs> Come on. Tori Tupac. Tupac. The list. Biggie Smalls. The list. Yeah. Take off. <laughs> the list. No. Pop Smoke. The mm. list. Man. King Von, the list. Oof. Like, 
No, no, you, the, 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 these greats, yeah, Mo three. The, the, these you can greats. Pick twenty of the last motherfuckers died in the last twenty years, and that's the best of hip hop. Mm. Jaguar Wright explained how Rihanna was sold to Jay Z at sixteen years old. She explained how it was super sketchy that Rihanna got brought to America at only 16 years old without any parental supervision and how she auditioned for Jay-Z at 3 o'clock in the morning. She what? explained how it didn't make sense that Rihanna's parents would let her fly by herself after just meeting Evan Roberts all the way to America to meet with Jay-Z in the middle of the night. And she alleged that Rihanna's dad got a half a million dollar payout for letting this happen. Wow. She alleged since this was all out of the blue, Rihanna would have had to flown on a private plane to get from Barbados to America because she wouldn't have had a visa and her parents were not around with her to fly to America. Mm. And Rihanna even explained how Jay-Z would not let her leave until she signed the recording contract and the label locked her in the office until 3 a.m. You've gone through Whoa. some big changes since you've been signed at Def Jam. Can you tell me what are the biggest changes you've gone through from St. Michael's Barbados until now you being a superstar? Well, one of them for sure is being away from my friends and family. Mm. After growing up around my mom and all my friends for, for 17 years and then moving to a big city with no one because all my family and friends are still in Barbados. So after moving to a big city with, you know, basically around strangers, mm. that was the, the hardest thing for me to cope with at first. Are you lonely sometimes? Um... I wasn't lonely, but I really do miss my family and my friends. And a lot of people have speculated this for years about Rihanna because people found it super weird right before Jay-Z signed Rihanna, he was working heavily with a 16-year-old Tierra Marie who signed to Def Jam by L.A. Reid. And after a while, there was rumors circulating all over that Tierra Marie and Rihanna actually had a fallout because Rihanna's career skyrocketed and Tierra Marie got let go from Def Jam. Mm. And allegedly, Tierra Marie is the Jane Doe that is suing Diddy and L.A. Reid for S.A. when she was just 16 years Whoa. old. And I mean, it is pretty weird because Jay-Z just started talking to Beyonce as soon as she turned 18 years old. And not long after Rihanna signed to Jay-Z, there was rumors swirling all over the media that Jay-Z was cheating on Beyonce with Rihanna. Wow. And a lot of people still to this day never understood why Rihanna and Beyonce are not close and we've never got a collaboration with the two of them, mm. even though Rihanna was claimed one of Jay-Z's biggest stars. Jaguar Wright then went on to allege how Rihanna's last album, Anti, was basically a cry for help. She talked about how creepy it was that Rihanna did the album cover of a child with a crown over her eyes. And it says that the anti-album is about a person opposed to a particular policy, activity, or an idea. Ooh. And then Jaguar Wright explained how creepy the promotion video for Anti was. Whoa. Hell nah. So I'm going to go ahead and roll you guys this clip of Jag explaining how Rihanna was sold to Jay-Z at 16. And you guys let me know what you guys think about all this in the comments. This is when crazy. are we finally going to have a real conversation about whether or not Rihanna was trafficked? Oh. To death jam. She was the innocent baby when she came over here. And look she at her now. 14 going on 15 years old flown over without parental supervision in a private plane by a man who was supposed to be a producer who auditioned her at 3 a.m. in the fucking morning in a hotel room mm. auditioning at 3 a.m. in the morning a 14 year old girl she said 17 with no parental consent with she no parental can't. with no parental no nobody yeah she was, flown. she was flown to another country. She was taken to Def Jam headquarters. She was left in a conference room alone with Sean Carter for nearly six hours alone with no parental supervision. A she was home. flown up separately. She was 14 and a half going on 15. She's about 16 when Ponda Replay came out, wasn't she? Her father collected a $500,000 check she has the fastest inked deal in Def Jam mm. history. 
How did they get Rihanna from Barbados to New York City? Quickly. They got her there quick. Like that. Bought a private plane. Yeah. Just told you. Just said that. If people knew how many of these girls are transported around on private planes, how they're able to redact, change names on manifests, mm. she wouldn't have needed parental consent or a passport if she got on a private plane on the manifest listed as someone else. Mm -hmm. They only worry about the body count. Not They're not tonight. checking IDs at the tarmac. They're trusting whoever's bringing them on is doing everything above board. So many get... girls were transported, models just like that, back and forth between Paris and New York. Wow. If you go back and look at the Victoria's Secrets documentary, they'll talk about some of the young girls that, uh, you know, Epstein had brought yeah, up. Those, girl, those girls were young. Young. 12, 13, 14 mm -hmm. models from Paris couldn't mm -hmm. speak English. They were walked onto a plane. They were given sedatives and champagne and caviar, and they woke up in New York. Why did they want to pass Foxy Brown around? I was just going to say that everybody passed Why did everybody around. They want around? to pass Tierra Marie around. Because the they only reason Rihanna didn't get passed around was because she belonged to the king. Go back and look at that album cover for Auntie. Why she chose to put a child bride with a crown over her eyes. Blood everywhere. It's a sacrificial lamb. And the crown is over her eyes. So she can't see all the horrible things that are happening around mm. her. It's sad when people are screaming and no one will listen. Mm. That fucking album cover ain't a cry for help. I don't know what is. Look yeah. at even look now they, they released this anti diary full film before the album came out. Look at how demonic this album was. Let's the images. She walks down the hallway. Dressed in white. Dressed in white. Black like and white bride. images. Man, this stuff is creepy, bro. Is he protecting people or are people protecting him? Oh, no, he's selling it because he needs the cash. The last freak off tape that just got sold on the dark net, which I know because I monitor, went for 500 million. What? It had multiple stars in it. Nicki Minaj, Rihanna. What? Chris Brown. Justin Bieber, Drake. Oh, what? It was a really interesting night in Calabasas, and he just sold that footage. Wow. H how come you think it doesn't get leaked to the public? The dark net? Yeah, like... Because of the dark coin. Most people don't even know that the dark coin exists. Oh, but that's goodness. how they're trading for all of the flesh they sell. Which is why I, I became so outraged last year when the girls, when the twins turned 16 and he had them dressed like prostitutes and then he auctioned them off as NFTs because the NFT that he sold them to was attached to that dark fucking coin. Whoa. It was like a promissory note to sell his daughters to the highest bidder. You, you see movies like, um, whoa, whoa, who's the, the worst celebrity like that, that you've been around and is like the most full of sin. I know no sin is greater, but like, just was like, damn, this Clive this. Davis. What a surprise. A full blown Z honest devil incarnate <laughs> Clive Davis. He Janis Joplin. He blackmailed Betty Wright, so she wouldn't tell anybody that he Janis Joplin. He killed Whitney Houston. <sighs> There's not a day that's gone by in the past four years that I don't acknowledge that because of what I choose to do,
I might lose my life today. Mm. That's a reality. Now I could let that freak me out. I could let that make me scared. Or I could say, I got good friends, people that believe in me. And I'm just going to keep going full throttle until I can't go no more. Whether I'm stopped or God calls me, it's all the same either way. He's in, in charge. So what do we get done with today? If today is all we got left, let's say today was the last day. What do we, what, what do, we do with today? Mm. Did we make a difference? Did we open up a door? Did we possibly create a new perception, maybe a new path? Are we getting somewhere? Are we starting to realize that somewhere along the way, we allowed them to tell us that our regular lives don't deserve to be Ooh. celebrated and we gotta want this shit. Right. Ooh wee. You wanna know why Neo Soul was great? Because we celebrated normal life. We wrote songs about family reunions. Shit, you did. We wrote songs about, you know, hard relationships between mothers and daughters. We wrote songs about the joys of family. We wrote songs about the pain of heartbreak. We wrote so We wrote about the shit that y'all did. Mm. When you hear Far Away From Here by Kindred, you hear a family in struggle who's just waiting, you know what I mean, for that moment where they can get far away from here. How many people feel like that every day? You want to know what I know? Most people don't feel like every day. Like they need to write eight times in a song that they wear every chain that they own. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when, when, when do we hear... You know, it, it's gotten to the point now where the, the music is so dehumanizing. Mm. We don't realize we're not making music for humans anymore. We're making music for animals Ooh. and impulses. Ooh, we. Yeah. Because the truth is, when real good music does come out, the kids enjoy it too. What did I say earlier? October London. He's there, Raheem Devon. Clearly it still has value. Why don't we promote it more? We got to figure that out. And we got to change the program. Yeah. Yeah, we here. We up. You 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 ready to go in? Yeah, it's three <laughs> <laughs> I got. I have one question. Absolutely. Do you think the end is near? Which end? The end. There's been the end before. Yeah. And guess what? Life goes on. <laughs> All right. You know, I'm sure the flood felt like the end and yet life went on. You know what I mean? I'm sure Hiroshima felt like the end for a lot of people, mm. but life went on. I'm sure there's a lot of things that feel like the end and yet somehow life goes on. I don't think we need to be worried about an end. I think we need to be worried about right now. Because mm. if you're doing right by... If you're doing right by right now, the future has a better shot. Stop worrying about all of that shit. Right. Like, we, we too worried about yeah. time, place, and tense. The past is a story. Whatever I did yesterday, that ain't happened today. It's a story I can tell. Maybe it's something I can learn from or just something funny to tell. Whatever the case may be, it's a story. Until I wake up tomorrow, the future, that shit ain't real. All I got is right now. Mm -hmm. That's Amen. all any of us got is right now. Mm -hmm. Let's focus on right now. Who's the hottest artist in Dallas that's not being supported by Dallas? 
<laughs> we just had this argument. We just, you just missed this argument. Man, we gonna have to have that off camera. Part two, part, part two. two, part two, part two for show. Hey, man. Well, that's a place to end for now. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, you said a lot of. I watch all your interviews, and they just get more and more. I don't think I ever think you can go any deeper, and then you just. <laughs> <laughs> you just hit it every single time. I, I'm always amazed. I, I, I don't know what what manner of being that you are, but <laughs> we'll figure it out. I'm gonna uh, put it to you this way: I'm a person that chooses to want to be my higher self. Amen. And I'm willing to go through every level of fire to earn it clean. Mm. You know, carnage, even within oneself can be, it can be helpful. Sometimes we don't realize how sick we are with the shit that we're doing, mm. you know? Ain't nothing wrong with a fresh start. Facts. No matter how old you are. Facts, amen. Am I wrong, Ange? No, you're making wrong now. Yep. Second win, third win for some of us, and you keep on going. Well. I know what one thing that you are, and that is a real life street star. Yeah. One million. Right one now. million. Hey, picture. Part, part one in the books. Yeah. Let's turn it off. Yeah. All right, so that was another conspiracy theory TikTok, man. Focusing on a lot of Diddy stuff, Cassie stuff, but also just in general with the whole entertainment industry and the stuff that goes on behind the scenes people perspectives and thoughts this stuff is a lot creepier what they say uh the truth is a lot more scarier than the fiction or something like that this is crazy stuff uh like i said y'all let me know about the jag right jaguar right let me know about her like what she been through uh who is she how did she gain this this voice that she has and just let me know about her i'm not familiar with her but um i see a lot of her clips um you made it to the end of this one you a real one for real you should drop that in the comments man and like i always say if you into this stuff you got some time on your hands i got a TikTok playlist you can binge watch and just hit play and just yeah have some stuff to look at but until next time man self-love and positivity fire squad i got you when you know it Whew.